Hello, my name is Alexander Lesokin. I'm a medical oncologist at uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, focusing on multiple myeloma. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the Magnetism 3 uh, study presented at ASCO this year. Uh, this was a phase two uh, trial of uh, BCMA by specific antibody in patients with relapsed refractory myeloma uh, called l -ranatumab. Uh, So l uh, is a, a, a bispecific uh, T-cell engager. Uh, it targets uh, B-cell maturation antigen, uh, an antigen ex uh, that's preferentially expressed uh, on plasma cells, and also T-cells uh, to activate T-cells. Uh, and this uh, compound has been tested uh, in an initial uh, uh, phase one trial called Magnetism 1, where it showed very encouraging uh, efficacy as well as uh, durability of uh, response. The current uh, study, uh, the Magnetism 3 study, is an open label multi center non randomized phase two trial. Uh, it is designed to include patients exposed to an IMID, an anti CD38, and a proteasome inhibitor. Uh, folks that uh, have uh, moderate kidney dysfunction, uh, which we characterize as a uh, 30 millimeters per minute of creatinine clearance, so moderate kidney dysfunction, uh, low platelet counts, platelet counts over 25, and uh, uh, some limitations in their overall uh, well being, which we uh, measure through ECOG uh, status. So, ECOG status of two or less was uh, permitted on study. Uh, a group of patients uh, that was enrolled that had never received prior BCMA-directed therapy. A second group uh, was enrolled that uh, was previously treated with BCMA-directed antibody drug conjugates uh, and also uh, CAR T cells. Everyone received l uh, on a weekly uh, schedule at a fixed dose. The dose was 76 milligrams. Uh, that was uh, predetermined based on the phase one dose escalation results. And the main outcome measure was uh, a centrally uh, adjudicated response, as well as uh, secondary things like uh, uh, safety and uh, progression-free survival, uh, overall survival times, and a variety of other survival endpoints. What was presented at uh, ASCO this year was an initial uh, 94 patient cohort uh, of patient, uh, folks that uh, had not received prior BCMA-directed therapy who had gotten at least a single dose of l uh, at the time of the data cut in March on March 23rd, 2022. Um, the study uh, was, uh, it, the treatment uh, was given with a dose, two-dose uh, step-up. So in the first cycle, folks got a 12 milligram followed by a 32 milligram a step up dosing prior to uh, the week uh, two dose of 76 milligrams. Uh, and there were some pre-medications given. Uh, the reason for that was uh, to uh, lower the rates of cytokine release syndrome, uh, this uh, syndrome that is associated with T-cell redirection uh, therapy like CAR-T and other bispecifics. Um, the patients uh, enrolled uh, were uh, had a median age of 69. Um, they was a, it was a diverse patient uh, population uh, of folks that were heavily uh, uh, pre-treated with a, a median of five prior lines of uh, therapy, uh, a proportion with high cytogenetic uh, risk status, 27%, a proportion with a high burden of disease, um, about 20% with more than 50% uh, plasma cells in their bone marrow, and about 30% with extramedullary disease. Uh, all folks were uh, refract, uh, almost all patients were refractory to um, immunomodulatory drugs, a proteasome inhibitor and anti-CD38. So, and uh, uh, almost 40% of patients were actually pentadrug refractory, meaning uh, refractory to two imids, two proteasome inhibitors and anti-CD38. At the time uh, this, when this uh, data analysis occurred, um, uh, the average length of treatment or the median length of treatment was around 17 weeks, so three and a half months or so. 55% uh, of patients were still on study. Uh, the majority of patients that came off came off because of uh, progression of disease. Uh, the main side effects were uh, hematologic, 
so meaning lowering of blood count. Uh, and um, the main non-blood count related uh, side effects were uh, CRS uh, and some GI toxicities, skin reactions. Uh, all of these were fairly um, moderate, mild and moderate. There, there were a few uh, severe events. Um, infections occurred in, in about half of patients, uh, about 25% uh, uh, of these were felt to be treatment uh, related, but only one patient had an infection that led to discontinuation of treatment. Uh, however, it was an issue that needed to be managed, uh, meaning uh, things like COVID-related infections and uh, upper respiratory infections and pneumonias. And we did observe some uh, unique opportunistic infections uh, known as uh, PCP or PJP and CMV reactivation. Uh, highlighting the fact that these need to be uh, monitored and evaluated uh, in an ongoing, uh, 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 as uh, the elder natinib continues uh, and other bispecifics continue to get developed. Um, I'm going to speak a little bit about CRS just to say that the overall incidence of that uh, was uh, with the two-step up uh, dose treatment was around 59%. Uh, but the sort of more significant grade two was about 19%, and there were no high-grade events. And the overall response rate was approximately 60% uh, at the time of uh, this uh, data analysis. Um, and uh, those that had a response, uh, almost 90% of them had ongoing response. And response was also seen in essentially all different uh, categories of disease. So, Overall, I think the study showed us that uh, elranatumab uh, administered at this uh, 76 milligram uh, weekly dose schedule with the two dose step up uh, was quite effective uh, in a real world in, in, in a population that really tried to mimic a real world myeloma population. Um, there were a lot of folks that had uh, triple and penta refractory disease and unfavorable prognostic factors like extramedullary disease and high burden of disease in the marrow. Uh, CRS was manageable and, uh, you know, grade one mostly and uh, with 19% uh, grade two events uh, and the step up doses really helped to manage that and limit it to the first uh, couple of doses administered. Uh, the most common side effects were hematologic and the non-hematologic other side effects were, as I said, low grade. And this response rate of 60% uh, in folks that are refractory to many of our other uh, very active classes of treatment uh, is really quite remarkable and uh, encouraging for our patient population. Um, Elranatumab continues to get uh, developed uh, as a single agent in earlier lines of disease as well as in combination uh, therapies. And so there's an expansion of this magnetism program that's ongoing. Thank you for your attention. I think with that, I will stop.